You got a nose job. Yeah, I did. It looks good. Big improvement, huh? Well, yeah, they took about a foot off. Now I know why I broke up with you. Oh, hey, get off it, hey. Oh, my God, I taught you how to work that clutch. I drive an automatic, thank you very much. This is great. This is bogus. I don't see a single person that I would want to talk to. Besides, I'm freezing. You should have dressed warmer. No, 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 I didn't pay a small fortune to look like an Eskimo. Don't you realize what your drinking and cocaine does to me? I am in high school, Mom. I need somebody to take care of me, to listen to my problems. I'm there for you, Kel. I'm your best friend in the whole world. I don't need a best friend. I need a mother. Where are you going? Timber Hills, first thing in the morning. Thank you. I never meant to cause you any pain. I know. Someday, I hope you can be as proud to have me as a mother as I am to have you as a daughter. No, no, Cal. This might have to be a solo mission on your part. No way, Brenda. I'm not leaving you up here with Don Juan. I have to help you face your fears. Don't kill me. This is about Peter. <laughs> Brenda, get me down. No! <laughs> what a wicked thing to say. You never felt this way. Ross Weber was this godly stud on the football team who I had a hopeless crush on in the ninth grade. I was working the whole year at getting close to him. I started hanging out with the JV cheerleaders, going to all the games, just tagging along wherever he was going to be. And one night after some game, everybody was getting drunk except me, and a bunch of us drove up to Mulholland. When we got there, Ross says he wants to take me to his favorite spot in the woods. So stupid. I think, wow, that would be a neat thing to do. But of course, when we get there, all he wants to do is have sex. He kept saying, come on, Kel. I know you want it, Kelly. And I did, but not on the ground. He didn't even bring a blanket. It was over pretty quick, and after that, he took me home and never talked to me again. Listen, Brandon, if you really want something, you have to go after it hard. You know, Steve wouldn't like this. Well, Steve's off chasing some girl in orange this week, but he would love to be in your position right now. Brandon, do you have a date with a dance? Nope. Neither do I. You're kidding. You don't have a date? You don't have to broadcast it. Well, get it. Dating's your life, isn't it? I know, it is. But out of all the cute guys at Beverly or West Beverly, I've either dated them and never want to see them again, or they're taken. All the cute guys except you. Thanks for the compliment. Brandon, I promise you we'll have fun. I will show you a really good time. You said you weren't going to buy it. Well, I changed my mind. Well, you'll just have to go change. No, you're going to have to go change. Brenda, I am a spring princess. Kelly, I don't give a damn. Do you know how important this is to me? Well, maybe you've made it too important. Maybe you are just jealous. You do know what this is going to look like, don't you? What? Like we planned this. Like we planned to go as the Bobsy twins. I think you're a really great dancer. You call this dancing. I also think you look really cute tonight. I have a confession to make. What? I thought you were cute since the first day you moved here. Brandon, don't you think we make a great couple? I guess I don't. It's like, I know you too well. What if we were complete strangers? I'd probably be in love with you. It is my great honor to announce this year's West Beverly High Spring Queen. And the winner is Kelly Taylor. I am ready to have the summer of my life. Ooh, oh, my Lord. Good, powerful. <laughs> You're getting better. What's the big deal? Just because David's a geek doesn't mean his dad is. I don't know. He's always looking at me like I'm naked or something. And now he's fully bragging about this date like it's the two of us going out. Got to do something. What if my mom really likes this guy? How about a drink to start? A drink? You want my mother to order a drink? Because the last thing you do is ask a recovering alcoholic what she wants to drink. Kelly, why don't you just shut up? What is going on? Ever since you and dad got divorced, almost my entire life, you have either been married or drunk. I just thought that when you finally got out of Timber Hills, you would want to spend some time getting to know me. What do you think I'm doing? Why do you think you're here? This is not about me. This is about you and some guy. I just don't want to share you. Not yet. Not with David Silver. Look, I don't want to be up here anymore. I want to go back to the party. I don't think you do. How do you know what I want? I mean, if you didn't want to be up here, why'd you come? I wanted to be up here, and now I don't, okay? Thought we were going to play make-believe. This isn't the kind of make-believe I had in mind. I'm looking at what you're wearing, and I'm thinking this is exactly the kind of make-believe you have in mind. Get off me! Stop it! Cut the drama, prom queen. I'm sure this is nothing you haven't done before. Get off of me! I thought I was being all sexy dressing like this, you know? Kelly, I tried to tell you that the dress was a little too much. It wasn't the dress, though. It was me and what I did. I should have listened to you. You tried to warn me. You tried to tell me what I was walking into. Kelly, you said no. I said no too late. You could have 
any guy you want. No, I can't. Name one guy you ever wanted who um, turned you down. Brandon Walsh. Last year at the spring dance, he told me he thinks of me like a sister. When I was a freshman, I threw myself at a senior who pushed me into a bush and never talked to me again. For the next year and a half, I spent all my time trying to live up to that reputation. And now, even though I've changed, I never know whether a guy asks me out because he likes me or because he thinks I'm easy. David's father and my mother, I can't believe this is happening. What? They're always harping on us to be so careful. No. Yeah. What? Donna, my mom's pregnant. I thought I could trust you. How could you do this to me? I didn't mean to. It just came out. How could something this important, this confidential just come out? Well, when he said his dad was planning on asking your mom to marry him, I just assumed. What? Mom's planning on proposing on Valentine's Day. Isn't that incredibly romantic? This is so much worse than I ever imagined. So, what are you building? Wedding canopy. You know your mom designed it herself? Yeah, she's making a pretty big production out of all of this. You know, Kelly, I think I know what your problem is. Why don't you tell me? We're a little bit hung up on the way things used to be. Instead of making your plans for the way things are gonna be. Yeah, sort of like having a new father, a new brother, and a new baby all at the same time. So what's a girl like you doing home alone on a Saturday night? Well, I was just asking myself that same question. Did you come up with any answers? Brenda's in Baja with Dylan, and Donna's out with David, and that leaves me. No boyfriend? No. My mom's at Lamaze class. I was just nuking some lasagna. If you're hungry, you could stay for dinner. I mean, if you're not busy or anything. No, I'm not busy. Yeah. Smells great. Yeah, I love lasagna. I'm not talking about the lasagna. Maybe I should go. Yeah, maybe you should. Where's your mom? Inside. You're living a little dangerously, aren't you? Well, you bring out the wild side in me. I just feel totally myself around you. Like it's okay to say or do anything because you'll understand. I'm just gonna miss seeing you around the house, that's all. With everything that's been going on, you're the only person I can really talk to. Just because I'm not working on your mom's house doesn't mean I'm gonna stop being your friend. Is that all I am? Just your friend? Because the other night, we were more than just friends. Kelly. Jake, I want you to go with me to my mom's wedding. I don't think so. Why not? See, I'm the last person that you should be bringing home to mom. So I asked Jake to go to the wedding with me today, and he just blew me off. Kelly, don't you realize that Jake is just a fantasy for you? That's probably why you like him so much. I asked Jake to the wedding, he turns me down, I am totally devastated. And now Brenda's telling me that I'm a fool for ever thinking there was something there. Jake, what are you doing here? After I left, I realized that dropping out of your life is not going to be that easy. And the truth is, you don't know anything about me. I think I do. Well, you know that I paint houses. Beyond that, you have absolutely no idea what you're getting yourself into. And I'm willing to take my chances. Look at her. She looks exactly like me. Yes, she does. And that's because she's my sister. And you're my mom. This is my family. And I'm a major part of it for the very first time in my life. We kissed, okay? No big deal. Let's just forget about it. No, it's not it. I was there. It was more than that. You know it. Who happened to get a little carried away one night? I am not going to let that get in the way of my relationship with my best friend. Aren't you forgetting we're going to turn into a pumpkin in a couple of days? No, I'm not forgetting. But we're not doing anything wrong. Kel, we're just having fun. So far, we've kissed each other in, in your living room in my cabana and we got in the water today. So what, are you making the list? There's another one. You're crazy. I'm happy for you and for Brenda. You guys belong together. Where does that leave you, Kim? Can't have it both ways. Every time I turn around, I see him hugging her, kissing her. I don't know if I'm going to make it through a whole year of this. Kel, can I ask you something? And I really don't mean to be getting too personal or anything. What? Are you in love with Dylan or something? No, I just can't stand being in every class with him and Brenda, that's all. Brenda thinks that we should start seeing other people. So she said. What do you think? I think it's time I started seeing you. You know, Kelly, if you're trying to lose your bimbo image, I honestly don't think this will help. I am not a bimbo, okay? Whatever you say, Kelly. But I was always taught that if it looks like a duck and it walks like a duck, go to hell. Look, I wanted to tell you. Then why didn't you, Kel? Dylan thought that it would only hurt you if we told you, and neither of us wanted to do that. So you snuck around behind my back out of concern for my feelings. That's pretty pathetic, Kelly. You were the one who said you were tired of going out with someone who was brooding all the time. Have you heard from Dylan? No, not since you split. I'm worried about him. Yeah, me too. I'm also worried about you and Bren. Well, there's nothing to worry about. We just decided that if we never talk to each other again, it'll be too soon. What Donna said is true. It was really inconsiderate of me and I talked to you about it first. Do you think I have problem areas? Kelly, no. If we're gonna make it, we have to tell Brenda the truth. We can't make the same mistake again. Fine, no problem. No, I mean, we have to tell her about the summer. Telling Brenda about us fooling around this summer, it's not gonna help anything. I know, but she's my friend. I owe it to her to tell her the truth. Brenda's still not speaking to you. She says hello, but that's about it. I mean, it's Friday night. Do you know how many times I would have talked on the phone by now? Got to be difficult for her. You got something she wanted. Give her some time. She's got to come to terms with this in her own way. I gained two pounds yesterday and I didn't eat anything. Something is definitely wrong with me. Nothing is wrong with you. It's probably just water. When I was little, I was a major butterball. No matter what anybody said, it was
was definitely not cute. Never gonna let myself get that way again. What is that? Don't worry, I bought them at the drugstore. They're harmless. It's just one of those over-the-counter diet pills. Do they work? I don't know, but if it does what the ad says, it'll cut my appetite and help me to lose those stubborn five pounds. How many did you take? Just like it says on the box, one before each meal. I did read the directions. You sure they're good for you? Dylan, they're over-the-counter appetite suppressants. You can buy them anywhere. You are the last person I would expect to be turning into my mother. I just don't like to see you starving yourself. Brandon, Nat, call 911! Kelly, wake up! What could possibly have possessed you to do this to yourself? I didn't do anything myself i went on a diet that's all a starvation diet that could have killed you but i'm fine now right doctor i don't see any need for you to stay in the hospital after tonight but i want you eating young lady a balanced sensible diet and i want you to consider getting into some kind of professional support system how about if i promise to piggy out a couple of times this is no joke kelly you're not in real trouble yet but you're on your way why don't you just do me everybody else a big favor and go back to brenda is that really what you want doesn't matter what i really want i'm just a stupid blonde bitch who's not really worth it kelly taylor <laughs> Guess where I'm going? Dinner with your mom. And my dad. Your dad? So that's your dad. Yep, that's him. Now I know how I'm gonna remember this day. It's the day I saw my mom and my dad together in the same place. John, I have a boyfriend. I woke up at 6 o'clock and I was so excited I couldn't get back to sleep. I'm so excited. It's our first day of college. You're babysitting? Well, it's just for the afternoon. Mel strikes again, huh? He dumped her on you? Look, just yell all you want and get it over with, okay? Yeah, I will, because I think your father is really sick. Yeah, well, your mom's a space case half the time. At least she's trying, David. Yeah, well, so is he. This is your parents' war, not yours. I think that for Aaron's sake, we need to both remember not to fight our parents' battles. Look, David, I'm sorry. You know I hate this mess between our parents just as much as you do. Out of all of my mom's five marriages you're the only brother i ever had but you said you'd wait 50 years for me feels like it's already been that long i don't want to do this okay what have you been talking to sanders or something no it's not a conspiracy that i don't want to sleep with you so what's with the snow white act come on i was there i know what you're really about you haven't changed a bit have you you do not know the first thing about what it's like to care for somebody i can't believe i was actually falling for you if this is how you fall for someone you got a lot to learn why don't you find somebody else to teach it to you didn't want to have thanksgiving dinner with me but when brenda asked you you showed up with bells on is that it that's not it at all this is not about brenda and dylan and kelly bermuda triangle here I know that you are probably still mad at me, and I am definitely still mad at you, but I have to kiss you right now in front of all of these people. We don't have to spend every waking hour together to be a couple. Or said all the good ones were taken, obviously never met you. You've got to be the best catch on campus. You know the last time I really danced was with you almost two years ago at the spring dance. You know what I'm thinking of? And I made a move on you. What you did was tell me that we could never be a couple because I was like a sister to you. But you did do one thing good that night. You told me that if we were perfect strangers, you would be in love with me. Did you just tell me that I'm like a sister again? Because that would make things a lot easier. We have two people at home who trust us. I know. Brandon, I can't play this dating game anymore. Dylan doesn't want to back Lucinda's film, but he's willing to have dinner with her to reconsider the whole thing. And I still think that there's a good chance he can come around if you'll come to dinner, too. The fewer people that know about me and Lucinda, the better. Yeah, I know, but he's getting a little weird about you and me. I just don't think it'll work unless you come. You didn't tell him what almost happened between us, did you? No, but he saw the picture in the condor, and even though he says he's joking, obviously it's bothering him. Thank you for ruining my first dinner party. You know, I don't care so much that you don't want to help her out. But I don't understand why you have to be so rude. I am sick and tired of stepping aside every time Brenda comes running to you with another crisis. Every time you call, he runs. Palm Springs in the middle of the night or jail. He's not your boyfriend anymore. You were jealous of me? Why? I mean, you have Dylan. Something tells me I won't have him forever. I can't help but think that you'll always be the one he'll remember as the great love of his life. I should have known we were in trouble. First day we met. Remember we went shopping after school? And you spotted that amazing spangly jacket and I was the one who ended up taking it home. What's going on with us? I mean, take away the sex and we have no relationship. Some kind of communication breakdown. The question is, is it fixable? Forget everything that happened in the last few weeks? I can do that. Is that ever since Susanna's moved here, you've changed. Okay, why don't all you right. Just... No, why don't you just keep grinding that axe, Kel? Because that's what this is about. You resent Suzanne. You resent Erica. Anything that takes my attention away from you for a little while. You know, I think we were both wrong. I don't think this is fixable. You know what? Maybe you were right. I think we need to start seeing other people. Yeah, I know how that song goes. You should. You taught it to me, remember? So this is it. That's what it looks like. We broke up. You what? I just got tired of fighting with him. Don't think it was meant to last. Are you okay? The weird thing is, I'm better than okay. Well, what's his name? Remember when I went in that retreat with Brandon? I got him to square dance. What else did you two do? We kissed. It's a full moon. It was better than nice. Am I nuts? To be crazy about Brandon Walsh is not to be nuts. Especially if he's crazy about you.
That part I'm not so sure about. Dylan and I split up, and I didn't even let the dust settle before I got on a plane to come here and see you. I just can't help thinking. You and I are such good friends, so I risk it. We'll always be friends. Just friends. That's what you want. I don't know what I want. I mean, it's kind of scary. I don't know if I should let myself feel the feelings that I'm starting to feel. Think the things that I'm thinking. You didn't tell anyone you were coming here, did you? Only Andrea. She gave us her blessing. Well, that's one down. I'm afraid we're going to give a lot of people a whole lot to talk about. Unless, of course, this is just a lost weekend. No. I like being in your world, Brandon. I want to stay. Well, you're welcome to stay as long as you want. Thank you. Feeling a little weird about something, though. What? Well, besides your parents and Andrea, no one else really knows about us. Well, that's because pretty much everyone we know is out of town this summer. Thank you for another wonderful evening, Mr. Walsh. Oh, thank you, Miss Taylor. We ought to do it again sometime. My mom was constantly reminding me that the camera adds 10 pounds. So by the time I was seven, I was so brainwashed I wouldn't even eat birthday cake anymore. Finally, I just got sick of the pressure and I got fat. But I stayed that way for a while, till high school. I just can't see your mother putting Aaron through the same turmoil. I'm sure she is really looking at this as just a one-time thing. It just felt like she was trying to sneak something past me. So what's bothering you more? That she put Aaron to work? Or that she didn't tell you she was doing it? I don't know. Maybe it was that she didn't ask me to be in the shoot with her. We're gonna die in here. No, we're not. Oh, he was down there. Yes, we're down here. Help me take this off from this too. I keep thinking I must have done something horrible to deserve this. My mother was a model, so growing up I was always really worried about how I looked. And part of me still thinks that that's important, but compared to almost dying in a fire, it seems pretty meaningless. Please don't psychoanalyze me, all right, Brandon? I've been trying to tell you that what happened to me was not a tragedy. It was a gift. And with Professor Finley's help, it's all beginning to make so much more sense. Okay. He's taught me so much. I mean, he has helped me discover a very different person than what I thought I was. I've always been afraid to be too smart or too funny or to enjoy the things I have because people might think I already have too much. I was lost. And Finley has given me direction. He's taught me that it's okay for me to shine because everyone has limitless possibilities. We both know the only reason you're coming on to me so strong is because Finley asked you to. He may have helped clarify what our future would be like together. I told him I would pay for the learning center if he could get you to go to bed with me, and here you are. You're lying. You're a hypocrite. You're a con artist, and you're a pimp. I see. So ten minutes with the ever-unstable Greg Jarrett, and suddenly I'm the devil incarnate? You tried to get me to sleep with Dylan so you could get his money. I tried to put you and McKay together because you belong together. When you told me that the new evolution could help Dylan open up, I thought you were talking about his soul, not his checkbook. You've come so far, Kelly. Don't regress. Don't tell me what to do. You guys have made my life very difficult the past few days. And it hasn't been easy, because I love you both. You may not believe that, but it's true. Brandon, I can't accept this. Dylan, have a nice trip. I can't go with you. I've made my choice, and I choose me. I hope you understand. I love you both till the day I die. You can still love someone without being married. Why does everything have to be over? Kelly, I proposed to you. And Dylan showed up with some world tour. I mean, it was like a weird contest between the two of you, and I was caught in the middle. Do you really think I'd do something like that to you? I'm saying that that's how it felt. So you're never going to forgive me. It's not a question of forgiveness, Kelly. There's just no going back. Well, I'm not going to give up on you yet. Are you heading to the coast for an audition? No. I'm going home, back to college. What's your major? Psychology. Are you traveling to L.A. on business? Sort of. I'm an artist. I move into a new studio in Venice. You have incredible eyes. And that mouth is like a ripe strawberry. Your best friend Valerie just showed up. Oh, goody. You're not going to be too happy when you see who she showed up with. How dare you show up here with him? It was his idea. You're not going to get any tears from me if that's what you're after. Look, Hal, I didn't do this to make you upset. Colin and I thought you would be thrilled. Just stay out of my life and stay away from Colin. How am I supposed to feel about the fact that you're spending Thanksgiving with Brandon? Are you worried about Brandon now after all this time? It's not that weird. I'm a little jealous, that's all. And he gets to be with you, I don't. I knew that if I made a choice between you and Dylan, it would have ruined your friendship. So you did the honorable thing. But now Dylan's gone. And have Colin. And I have Susan. And they have feelings, too. What was that for? Nothing. Just for being you. That's all. That's nice. What were you doing in there? Going to the bathroom. Really? What's your problem? I don't have a problem, Colin. You do. 
Yeah? What's that? What is this? It's Collins. I confiscated it last night. Now it's yours. Why? You're his girlfriend. Let me guess. Your father. He's coming in tomorrow. Why didn't you tell me sooner? I just got the letter today. What are you going to do about it? I don't know. He wants me to meet him at the airport. He's coming here to stay. For how long? Dear Kelly, I'm so sorry a great textile deal came along that I couldn't pass up. I'm flying off to Milan. Buy yourself a present and I'll call you in a couple of weeks. The semester's not a month old and you've already missed several classes. Are you sure? I've been late a couple of times. I've been sitting in the back. Maybe I just missed attendance or something. This is the third class of mine you've been in. You've never sat in the back before. Kelly, you're a bright student. Too bright for me to believe your absenteeism is a result of a sig alert. I've had some personal problems, and maybe that's been affecting me more than I realized. I'm sorry to hear that, but there's a big test coming up, and I'd really like to see you do well on it. Colin is not doing drugs anymore, and neither am I. Oh, you quit? Cold turkey? Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, things just got uh, out of control for me. It was like a binge, like a reaction to bad news. Crying is a reaction to bad news, not to coke. Okay, whatever you say, Dr. Freud. The point is that I'm done with it. I thought you would be relieved. I would be if I believed you. So I get high once in a while. It's not the end of the world. I can handle it. It's just to help me get through some work, all right? Where's the coke, Kelly? I don't know. Check the box. In the box, I wouldn't be asking, would I? Maybe your friends did it all last night. You know, you're really a selfish bitch, you know that? It was my money that bought it. That makes it my stash. Daddy's money. You're not gonna wrap me around your little finger like you do your father. You don't know anything about me or my dad. So why don't you just shut up? You're right, I don't. And I don't care. If you want more, you score this time. Fine. Done. Fine! I really gotta go. Well, I don't think you're going anywhere. See, you got a bill. The biggest bill. I mean, do you have any idea how much pharmaceuticals are? Danny! Danny, stop it! Come over to the couch! Strawberry, you got some work to do. Have some more um, wine, all right? I feel like such a loser. Look what I've done to myself. I had everything. I lost it all. I still love you, Brandon. We're not good for each other. I can't see you anymore. I want you to know that I'm not blaming you. You know, it was a two-way street. That's it, huh? I guess I don't have any say in this, do I? You know I love you. It's over. I'm sorry. How do you like the new me? How could you do this? Do what? You know exactly what you did, Tara. You sent me to him. I, I just told him to make me look as good as you. I don't even want to talk about this. Donna, what did I do? Maybe we just need a, a little time to get used to the new you. We told you she was weird. She wants to be you, Cal. <laughs> Weren't you supposed to turn yourself in today? Yeah, I ran. Like, you, you shouldn't be here. I can't help you. Do you think there will ever be a chance for us again? Yeah, sure. If you want there to be. I do. I guess I always have. I tried so hard to do the right thing last year when I turned you down. I just want another chance. If you think you could let that happen. We're both in the rebound, you know, I think. That rushing into something would just be a recipe for disaster. Maybe we should just give it some time, huh? You broke up with me, Kelly. I started spreading rumors about you. What are you talking about? I told anyone that would listen that you were a slut and that you'd sleep with anybody. You bastard. Do you know how long I had to live with that? Do you know how long that followed me? Yeah, the worst part is I became a slut that everybody thought I was. And I am still getting over it. I'm sorry. Yeah, well, sorry does not make up for what you put me through. Did you just hang up? Just a little phone code. One ring means that I am crazy about you. I see. And what does two rings mean? It means that I wish I was with you. Was that you who called? Three rings? I guess you're ready to tell me what that means now. It means that I'm falling in love with you. Valerie and Kelly buying gifts for each other. Special. Well, I know what I'm getting you. A new personality. Merry Christmas to you, too. My father blows me off and sends his girlfriend to break the news. I didn't think it was possible, but he has outdone himself again. I'm not his girlfriend. Oh, I'm sorry. Are you married? Should I call you mom? I'm not his wife, either. Bill Taylor is my father, too. I'm your sister. I think that you wanted me to believe that he was leaving me for selfish reasons. Not because he had some other family to take care of. Please don't be mad at me. You wanted me to hate him as much as you hate him. No, I was trying to protect you from something I thought would hurt you. You don't have to have anything to do with this girl. She's my sister, and you having kept that from me all these years isn't going to change it. A new journal. It's beautiful. I'm glad you like it. If I could have found another one, I would have bought it for myself. <laughs> oh, my <laughs> God, I don't believe this. How'd you know? Where'd you get it? Santa's helpers. Thank you. I love it. Merry Christmas. 
know, there is really something to be said about taking your time with a relationship. You get to see people's true colors. That's for sure. You betrayed me. No, you lost the scholarship because you didn't think you could lose it. You lost because you were so sure you were entitled to it. You didn't even prepare. Well, I'm not the only one that's going to lose. You're going to lose me unless you shape up. Excuse me, what did you say? You're the kind of girl I could marry. But you're blowing it, baby. You could be a Reese. Do you have any idea what kind of an inheritance I'm in line for? <laughs> you know, if you're in such a hurry to become a millionaire, I got a little tip for you. Every time the phone rings, bet someone. It's not me. You'll be right every time. What is that supposed to mean? You're a smart boy, Mark. Figure it out. What do they say? Be careful what you wish for. It might come true. When Brandon proposed to me and Dylan wanted to take me around the world, I chose to be on my own. Well, that's what I got. I bought a gift today for someone I love. Maybe I paid too much for something no one will ever see, but I didn't want anyone else to have it. I'm pregnant. What? I took a home pregnancy test and it came out positive. I can rely on a drugstore pregnancy test and if a real doctor says that you're really pregnant then we'll deal with it then i'm not pregnant are you sure i got my period why it took so long i have no idea but better late than never i ran a pregnancy test it was positive but that's impossible i told you i got my period actually you didn't you miscarried i can't believe it are you saying that this happened this morning that i'm only 22 22 year olds aren't supposed to miscarry have you had back aches or painful periods recently? Yes, I guess so. I'd like to run more tests right away. Why? You may have a fertility problem. I don't understand this. I got pregnant, didn't I? One second you're telling me I miscarried, the next second you're telling me I'm infertile. There are certain conditions which may make getting pregnant difficult, and if you do get pregnant, make carrying the child to term less likely. Are you telling me that I may never be able to have children? Kelly, I know this is confusing and hard to hear. It's also preliminary, which is why I'd like to run some tests. I have something called endometriosis. It makes getting pregnant difficult. And how often is that? 40% of the time. So that means 60% of the time they don't. I'll take those odds. You're not listening to me here, Brandon. I miscarried. I lost a child. You have no idea what that feels like. So don't talk to me about odds, okay? Yesterday, something was alive inside of me, and today it's dead. Class of 1997, please rise. To officially signify your graduation, please turn the tassels on your caps from right to left. I know it hasn't seemed like it, but you are very important to me. I just want to be back in your life again. I know there are a lot of years of resentment that I have to overcome, and I'm trying. I just want another chance, that's all. It's not that easy. It can be that easy, if you let me in. I want to apologize for starting a fight before. You don't have to apologize to me, honey. No, I want to. If you're really ready to start over, and so am I. You see, these uh, gentlemen are uh, federal marshals. And tomorrow I'm being indicted by the grand jury on charges of fraud and embezzlement. After that, I go to jail. Why? Because I'm guilty. Tonight was part of the deal I made with the DA. Jackie and Joy knew about this? Yes, they did. Why didn't you tell me? Because uh, I wanted you to forgive me before you knew the truth and thought even less of me. Dad, I'm so sorry. You know what I was thinking about on the plane? What? How much I love you. Oh, man, are you kidding me? You know, why don't we just catch a ride with Stephen Valerie? Uh, no, no, no. Come on, we'll change it right now. It'll take two seconds. But if there's anything I can do to help you, you just let me know. Okay. What was that? I don't know. Brandon, don't. What are you looking at, man? Nothing. Oh, that was scary. What do you say we just get this tire changed and get out of here, huh? <laughs> Kelly, look at me. Look at me. You gotta stay with me. How are you feeling? I don't know yet. Am I gonna be alright? Doctor expects a complete recovery. She's in a sudden shortness of breath. Blacked out. X rays are on the way. BP is 70 over PALP. Heart rate's 140. She's desaturated down to 80%. She's got JVD. Right side of her heart's totally distended. It's a pulmonary embolus. But she's post-op, and if we use a thrombolytic, she'll bleed through her wounds. Let's get her into surgery. Now! Pulmonary embolus? A blood clot that passed through Kelly's heart and lodged in her lungs. But you got it out, right? We restored blood flow to her lungs. So she'll be okay, right? We were able to find a donor with her blood type. That's Noah. Which should help a great deal. But for a short time, Kelly's brain was deprived of oxygen. We won't know for sure what damage, if any, she suffered until she wakes up. Can I help you? It's Kelly. I, I think she's waking up. Am I glad to see you? Who are you? My name is Kelly Taylor. I am 22 years old. My mother's name is Jackie. My sister's name is Erin. My brother's name is David. You are Brandon Walsh. So far, so good. Dr. Strilla was right. If I write it down, it really helps me to remember. Did I love Brandon? Yes. I try to remember how it felt. It's hard to remember feelings. Yeah, I just feel it. I remember you. It's all coming back to me, Brandon. But without you, I feel more lost than ever. Take your time, Mr. Taylor. 
be sure. He's not here. Kelly, are you sure it's not... No, you're getting used to it here? It's not as fancy as the Foundation's offices, but... Oh, but it's so much better. I didn't take that job to sit behind a desk and go to charity balls. That's fine, but I didn't really feel like I was making a difference. Whereas here, it's... Well, you get immediate confirmation. Yes. It's so great to feel needed to be able to help people every single day, you know? Did you hurt your shoulder? Yeah, it's a little stiff. I think it's from filling out all those insurance forms. <laughs> oh, come on, let me take a look at it. I am the doctor, after all. How's that? Oh, that feels great. How's that feel? That's much better. Thanks. Anytime. I've talked to Dr. Monaghan about his comments, and last night I did nothing to invite the kiss. Believe me, if last night hadn't happened, I would have just kept quiet and walked away from this job, but what he's doing is wrong. You gotta toughen up, Kelly. Don't cower every time a man pays you a compliment. I don't really like what we're doing here. Just give it a minute. Come on, get off your high horse, will you, and learn something from this experience. You're a beautiful girl. You got a great body. Use what you've got. What's up, Doc? Oh, this isn't the way it looks. Your contract with the Wyatt Foundation is terminated. You're fired. Emma, I don't think you should be calling here. Do you mind explaining that? I know this is going to hurt, but you got to listen to me, okay? The affair, it's totally over. The calling, it's got to stop. You're lying. I want you to come inside. There's a tape you need to listen to. You did feel something, didn't you? Being in my bed, making love to me. It was good, wasn't it? Yes, it was. Emma, you're beautiful and you're smart. When she played me that tape, I thought it was edited together somehow to make you sound like a monster. It's only listening to it now that I realize that's exactly what you are. I'm moving back to Donna's. I don't want you to call me. I don't want you to come over. Oh, those are beautiful. Thank you. You have a great place. Oh, thanks. It's not mine. I mean, well, <laughs> it was mine, but then I moved out. They're daisies. I can't. Why did I do something wrong? No, it's not you. It's me. Is it Brandon? I'm sorry. You're a really nice guy, but I'm in love with someone else. What are you doing here? Are you supposed to be here? I got time off for good behavior. I would have come to pick you up. No, I want to surprise you. I wish you would have called. Maybe I was afraid if you had time, you would think of some good reason why you shouldn't come down here. I'm glad you're here. We're getting married. Okay, I'm going to talk to your dad, but my mom is completely deaf to me. Luckily, she's going to be eager to please you. Me? Yeah, hit her low, hit her really hard with the truth about your dad. Well, when you say it like that, it makes me want to defend him. Look, this is no time for family pride or loyalty. I mean, do you want to be sharing holidays and birthdays and, and matching outfits with me for the rest of your life? Dad, you're not dressed. Where's your suit? At the uh, cleaners, I suppose. Please don't do this. I thought you didn't want us to get married. Believe me, Valerie's the last person I want as family, but it would have been worth it if it had meant you could have kept a promise. Why did you even propose to her? It was the way she looked at me. I saw a second chance. She believed in you, even though she knew she shouldn't. I know the feeling. Will you marry me? Yes, I'll marry you. How do you think they knew when they were ready to get married? You know, that moment. People just know? The minister asked us about our moment, and we couldn't describe it. You couldn't put it into words. That doesn't mean you should question it. It's just nerves, right? Nothing else. When was the first time you guys realized you wanted to kiss each other? In high school, I thought about it a couple of times, but in college, I had to have him, so I jumped him. I was so uh, thinking before I came out here about... About not going through with it. I was having the same thoughts. Uh, your poem is so beautiful. That's how I feel about you. And you don't want to marry me. I don't think you want to marry me either. I were supposed to go through life together. He was supposed to be my partner. I know, but you're gonna find someone else. And what if I don't? What if he was the one? Then you would have married him. I tried to forget about you. Did it work? No, but it almost did, and that makes me sad. Called the Chronicle, groveled. And? I'm a good groveler. You're good at everything. Except saying goodbye. I have no regrets. It's from you. I never sent him a love letter. I love you, Brandon, like a sister. So when I tell you that marrying Kelly is a bad idea... Oh, uh, you might want to give me that. I'm saying it for your own good. So you gave Brandon the idea to call up the wedding. No, I didn't. I didn't. He just wanted my opinion. Valerie, you are such a bitch. Well, let me explain. Don't even try. I could say I'm sorry for the way I've treated you. But I wouldn't believe you. And you could apologize for all the crap you've put me through. So I guess we're even. Yeah. Let's try and keep it that way. I had a really great time tonight. Good. I'm glad so did I. It's called a lung reduction operation. It'll ease grandpa's pain. And also prolong it. Well, that's a terrible thing to say. Emphysema is a terrible disease. 
Are the doctors giving you a prognosis yet? With or without the surgery, they don't think I'll live another six months. During which time they could come up with a cure. Mom, Grandpa is refusing treatment because he wants to live out his life. No, he wants to give up on it. I love Grandpa and I'm going to miss him, but I don't think he's going to change his mind. Well, not if we don't help him to. Mom, it's his life. Yeah, and all I want him to do is to live it for as long as possible. I know that this is probably hard for you. He's your dad. But he just wants to die with dignity. There is no such thing. For Grandpa, there is. Well, not for me. And that's what matters. How do you figure? Grandpa has a living will. It gives me power of attorney. Yes, but he's written out what he wants regarding medical treatment. Quite specifically. Do not resuscitate. And if and when the time comes, he's instructed you to pull the plug. Yes, and I won't do it. I told your mom I didn't blame her. Asking her probably wasn't the thing to do. She's too close. So you've given someone else authority? To put an end to all this? Yes. I told Grandpa that Mom wouldn't take him off life support. How do you react? He asked me to do it. His lungs weren't passing enough carbon dioxide. That's what caused his confusion. But the ventilator's breathing for him now. Does that thing hurt him? He's on pain medication for the moment. Well, in the future, a chalkboard will really help. Um, till then, just work out some signals with him. What? To communicate with him. He might be on that ventilator indefinitely. But he's alive. That's the main thing. You saved his life. His time left is so limited, no matter what we do. This is how he'll spend it. Why am I here, Don? I got the sense that uh, you wanted to move slowly. So you borrow a jet and bring me to Mexico. I need to know where we stand. And where do we stand? You tell me. You're the one seeing Matt. This feels different. Different now. Yeah, different than the last time we were here. Uncomfortable. Yeah. Less stressed. Mm -hmm. I'm now going to show you the power of suggestion. I'm going to hypnotize you. But uh, don't worry, I won't make you do anything embarrassing. Watch the watch. I'm going to count backwards from 10. As I do, you will become more and more relaxed. You will hear nothing but the sound of my voice. I'm going to ask you a few questions, and you will not be able to lie. You're a very beautiful woman, Kelly, and I bet you have a lot of suitors. If you had to be stuck on a desert island with one of them. Who would that be? Dylan McKay. Matt, let, just let me explain, okay? You just got up on stage and said you want to be trapped on a desert island with Dylan. What is there to explain? He was the last person I saw on my way up to the stage. I mean, come on, you can't take this seriously. No matter what happened in Mexico, I love you, not Dylan. Gee, I feel so much better. You wanted an explanation. So under the circumstances, you think you deserve to be forgiven? Yeah, I do. <laughs> A knife. Are you hurt? Are you, are, are you hurt? Was there anyone else here? Huh? Were you alone? On the ground. Why are they doing this? My name is Matt Durning. I'm this woman's attorney. Arms at your back. She's the victim here. No, he was trying to kill me. You said that? No, not now. Before when he raped me. That's the guy who raped you? Subject down. Are you sure? Yes. Did you know him? You shouldn't be arresting her. Did you? His name is Joe Patch. He was my client. You defended him? Worse. I kept him out of jail. After he locked the door? He pulled a knife. Which is when you grabbed the gun from your purse. He kept walking towards me. He wouldn't stop. Miss Taylor, we know you did it. We're here to find out why. He raped me. And that's a terrible thing. But Joe Patch was shot at point-blank range, and we need to know why. It was self-defense. I just got the phone with the DA, and he will not be filing a gun charge. I thought you said that they were insistent. Well, apparently they changed their minds. Good, thank you. In this really unconscious way, you used to drape your arm around my neck. Now I can't stand being touched anywhere near my throat. Never sneak up behind me. That's how he attacked me. But to hold me close makes me feel safe. We thought about writing, but decided we needed to say this face to face. What could you possibly have to say to me? We forgive you for killing our son. And we hope that someday you'll be able to forgive us. Forgive you for what? For Joey raping you. We're not trying to offend you. I think you should go. Please. Healing begins with forgiveness. Part of me wishes that I could give that to you, but some things are unforgivable. Joe Patch's parents came to see me last night. What did they want? Forgiveness. 
for raising the psychopath. I'm sure that was very difficult. I didn't give it to them. I went to see the Patches. And? I gave them what they wanted. You don't sound happy about that. I'm not really happy or sad. After watching Walter's anguish in your office this afternoon, I just knew that it was the right thing to do. I'm proud of you. I'm just glad that it's over. Your father is a pig. Apparently, Mel was at one of Gina's little feminist rallies at the After Dark. Jackie found out. And I don't think he got a duffel bag out of the house. Just Mel and Jackie, they break up and get back together all the time. Not this time. She's completely humiliated. It's over. The way it's composed, it's colors. Something about it seems inspired. Oh my Will you marry me? Yes. I talked to Donna today. Hmm? I'm out of the store. Really? How'd you handle it? She was very supportive. Well, that's great. Let's go out and celebrate. Yeah, now I just have to figure out what I'm going to do with the rest of my life. It's not the church I grew up in, but a lot of people say that this minister is fantastic. It seemed cold. Oh, it was empty. Just need some flowers. Yeah. I think we should at least meet with them. Don't you think getting married by someone neither of us knows is kind of impersonal? How about that judge you clerked for? What was his name? Judge Sinclair? Yeah, Judge Sinclair. What about him? I mean, he could perform the vows wherever we had the mm, ceremony. I don't know. He would be great. You're always talking about how thoughtful he is and how honest. He's a busy man. <clears throat> Wouldn't hurt to ask. I just don't think he'd do it. What is going on? Nothing. I just don't want to inconvenience him. I don't think that he would see our wedding as an inconvenience. All right, whatever. Can we just think of someone else? I know you have a lot on your mind, but planning our wedding should be a joy. And if your work or whatever it is that's making you so distant... My work. It's my work. If it's keeping you from enjoying this, then you need to deal with it. Now we're talking about you and Dylan. So did you guys straighten things out? <laughs> as much as we ever do, which is not at all. That is not my fault. I'm very clear with him about what I want. Were you being clear with him when you proposed three months ago? I did that to push him away. Oh, so to push him away, you asked him to marry you? Is there a point here? <laughs> yes, my point is that I like Matt. I love Matt. I want Matt to be your husband. But I just think if you and Dylan don't completely straighten things out, neither of you are ever going to be truly happy. You can't do this, Dylan. Do what? This, meeting me here now at the last minute. Why not? Because you don't want to? I don't. Because it's confusing? You're leaving because of me? I didn't say I was leaving. If you do, it won't have anything to do with you. I'm glad you're clear on that, because a couple of months ago you were saying something to me about commitment, something about me committing to you, and not just a little bit, all or nothing. You chose nothing. Let me choose again. You can't. It's too late. Why is it too late? Because it is. Surfer fatality at Point Doom and a riptide at Carbon Canyon Beach have the highway patrol and medical personnel in the area. Thank you, Jessica. Here's what we know. Although the warnings were in effect, many local surfers... Dylan's at Point Doom today. There were warnings. They closed the beaches because the waves are so high. I feel sick. Kelly. I know this is crazy, Matt, but we're not far from there. Please. Yeah. A surfer drowned at Point Doom yesterday. Dylan told me you were up there. I wasn't. Change your plans. Just the thought that that could have been you. Made you call all over town looking for me. I can't marry you. You deserve better than me. Dylan put you up to this, didn't he? No, he didn't, but he does have something to do with something it. Something to do with it. He told you about my sleeping with Amy in the desert. Kelly, it was a mistake. And no matter how Dylan spins it, it was meaningless. Dylan didn't tell me anything. Well, then who did? You did. Just now. Kelly. No, don't, okay? Can you honestly say that you haven't been even more unfaithful in your own way? No, I can't. Just why I know that breaking up is the right thing to do. Why didn't you tell me about Amy? It was none of my business. You lied for him. You lied to me. Yeah, but if I told you... I would have broken off the engagement a lot sooner than I did. And come to me, probably, and been with me because you were mad at him. Mm -hmm. I didn't want that. So you're just going to sit back and watch me marry Matt, knowing that he had cheated on me? You were committed to him. That is why this will never work between us. Why? Because you had this life-altering piece of information, and you kept it from me. I thought we were friends. Hey, sis. Come on, you've got to let go of that anger. It's not doing you any good. You don't want to end up like Mom. Listen. I was thinking we should spend some more time together. I mean, it's been too long. Last time you saw Sammy was when he was a baby. So what do you say we stop wasting it and get back to where we were? Truth is, Sammy's only met the one guy that I've dated seriously since he was born. And that would be? His father. We had a lot of history in high school. Didn't see each other for a while and then hooked up one night four years ago. Are you kidding me? Is that what you think? She hasn't been staying at a friend's house. She has been sleeping at a shelter. Why is that? Were you too drunk to notice? What is it these days, Mom? Uh, alcohol or are you back on coke? I'm not gonna stand by and watch you do to her what you did to me. Are 
Ryan. He's nice. I like him. We work together, so it's awkward. And he's 10 years younger than me, but makes it bizarre. Of course I still have feelings for him. He's my son's father. Kelly, come on. You know there's more to it than that. No, there isn't. Because it can't be. Because he's not here, and I deserve to be with somebody and be happy. Oh, give me a break. You are never going to be happy with somebody else because you're so in love with Dylan. And you know it. Look, you are a really great guy. I mean, any girl would be lucky to have a chance with someone like you. But things the way they are with Dylan, I just don't know if or when I'm going to be able to go there with somebody else. And you deserve more than that. I mean, he's hurt you so many times. I was just trying to protect you. Or maybe you were trying to keep the door open for yourself. Brenda, wait. I'm sorry. Hearing his voice today in that place with you there. Just stirred up a lot of old feelings, I guess. What's up with the suitcases? Well, Sam and I are going to visit Dylan. Are you gonna get back together with him? No, and there's every possibility that after this, Dylan may be out of our lives for good, but I have to find out one way or the other. I can't keep living in this in-between place, you know? Silver, you and I are family. You'll never be alone. Well, Dylan is Dylan, you know, nothing's changed. Same cheekbones, same sideburns, same perfectly messy hair. <laughs> Same commitment issues. Actually, really good. I'm okay with him being there and me being here. Girlfriends are like plants, and guys are like cut flowers. You know, sure, they're pretty and uh, they smell nice most of the time, but they don't last. Yes, and a plant or a friend, if you nurture it and take care of it, it grows and it lasts a long, long time. Does this make sense, helping at all? Just we have so much history, I guess I just... Figured, yeah, I guess I don't see history as a good enough reason to keep going on this way. Especially when we haven't learned anything from that history. You know what? I'm kind of hungry. I'm going to order. You can go live your life. I came because we're friends, no matter what you say. And our history means something to me, whether you want to acknowledge it or not. Why? Because it's me asking? This girl is in the early stages of recovery. She needs you. If you were reaching out for help, wouldn't you want people standing by you? You know, Brenna, I knew you were selfish. This is unforgivable. What the hell is wrong with you? How could you leave Adriana at the clinic like that? I mean, that's pretty low, Brenda, even for you. You know, I didn't think I could have kids either. But medicine is changing all the time. I'm thinking of adopting. I think that's a great idea. And I would really like you in my life for that. I'm not going anywhere. Look, us getting together didn't work out for either of us, okay? But don't punish my sister. You know what? West Beverly High doesn't revolve around Kelly Taylor's love life. You know, Ryan, if anybody should be pissed here, it's me. Brenda, really? You did? You said it yourself. I'm the one that lives with her. I should have been taking care of her. Oh my God, I can't believe this. After everything I've been through with my mother, here I am just like her. You know what? If this is you trying to comfort me, just don't. All right, because you have done nothing but try to avoid me since you came back to school. So you're not here tonight as my friend. You're my chauffeur. That's it. Getting a vision of a man. You're going to meet a man. Thanks for that, but um, I'm really not looking for a man right now. <laughs> looking or not, he's coming. Very handsome man with a six pack. That's good to know. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Madam Flanagan. Uh, but Donna? Uh, Donna? Mm -hmm. Um, do you think we are at a lesbian bar? No, it's just LA. Oh my god, we're totally at a lesbian bar. Yeah. Why would those girls send us to a lesbian I bar? No. Oh, it's because we had our arms around each other. Oh. <laughs> oh no, a friend of mine is opening a store. I ran out of crackers. What about you? Oh, just uh, picking up a six pack. A six pack? Yeah. Beer is sold in packs of six, but don't worry. I'm only going to drink three. Who's going to drink the other three? Uh, no one's called them. I'm kind of thirsty. There's something you should know. Jen? Not a nice person. I know her pretty well. And she is a compulsive liar. She's practically a sociopath. She used to have everybody snowed over, but not me. You know what? I'm not jealous. I am trying to be a friend here. I'm not interested in you anymore. Is there someone else? I've moved on. All I can say is I am glad there were no camera phone things when I was here. We do nothing. I mean, I, nothing's different. I'm sorry that she's sick. I am. But we can't get sucked back into that woman's drama. It's not drama. Yes, it is. With mom, it always is. Just because someone's sick doesn't change the past. So what about tomorrow for lunch? No, that's no good for me. Next day. Oh, y let me check, OK? I will look. Um, but I have to go to a thing, so I'll shoot you an email. I need to say this. No, you don't, OK? What happened between us, it happened. We can't change it. The only reason I came here was to tell you to leave Silver alone. She's bipolar, Mom. She's doing really well right now. We're doing really well. Fine, be one. Mothers want what's best for their children. What's best for Silver is that you leave her alone. Silver, 
You're bipolar. Not that that's a bad thing, it's just a thing, okay? You are different, you can handle intense stuff, and Jackie is intense. What she's going through is intense. It's gonna bring up stuff, stuff that you shouldn't even be thinking about or dealing with, trust me. You can't decide what kind of relationship I can have with my dying mother. Yes, I can. I'm your guardian, and I'm the one who takes care of you. I know this is gonna sound crazy, but Debbie has it in her head that you have a crush on me. Yeah. That's ridiculous. Because I have 20 more years of bad memories than you. And I'm not talking about just, you know, your run-of-the-mill falling down drunk memories. I'm talking about a lifetime of never being good enough. She's different now. I mean, she's sober. Well, her sober wasn't much better for me. When she was sober, she would remember to give me my diet pills and make my nose job appointment and remind me of what a colossal disappointment I was. So you know what? I got the message loud and clear. Look, I'm happy to pick you up at the hospital, drop you off, whatever you need, but that's it. What happened? Where is she? I just cleaned the room. goodbye and I didn't know. It's too late. It's not too late. What? They moved her to a private room. She's... You still have time to say goodbye. You're such an amazing person, Kelly. You're so beautiful, strong, and caring. I'm so proud of you, and I am so sorry for everything that happened. I forgive you. Thank you. I've been through a lot with my mom lately, and Harry ended up being someone that I could talk to, someone that I could lean on. And you're right, I shouldn't have. But you have to know that the minute I felt that there was anything like a crush, I hate using that word, I steered clear of him. I did not want to cross that line. You have to believe me. I'm not that person anymore.